So good evening again. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So last time uh, we talked about uh, the kinematics and dynamics of mechanical systems. And today uh, we will continue with that, with the dynamics, dynamics of system with constraints, and uh, I think also some control. I'm not sure, I'll, we'll see. So we discussed the uh, uh, Lagrange equations of motion last time, as you, you see in the upper uh, equation here. Uh, you see the Lagrangian, it's derivatives and the external forces, the, um, uh, the, the forces that act on the system, how they are defined and uh, which they are simply the Jacobian transpose time the uh, force. And in Lagrange, Lagrange is the uh, uh, is the su the sum of the uh, uh, kinematic energy minus the potential energy. Um, the kinematic energy is function of Q and Q dot, uh, the configuration parameters and their velocities, while the potential energy is only a function of the uh, configuration variables and not their uh, derivatives. And therefore we can uh, uh, extend the uh, Lagrange equation of motion and put it this in, in, in the, put the derivatives and note that V is only function of Q and not Q dot. And therefore there's no DV to the Q dot. Um, and therefore the, the equations become something like that, which are a bit simpler. And I'm not sure we, we talked about this already or not. Uh, the, 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 kinema, the kinetic energy of rigid body. And yeah, but yeah, so this is a bit uh, a reminder from last time um, because uh, we'll talk about the uh, the structure of the um, of the uh, equations of motion, and therefore we need to build it uh, like that, and and. So this is kind of a reminder that the kinetic energy of system of particles is simply the sum of half m mv square, and the rigid, the kinetic energy of rigid body is a, the a half m v transpose v of the center of mass of the. A, of the uh, rigid body. And there is also the rotational um, kinetic energy, which is half omega transpose I omega, where omega is the angular velocity um, of the rigid body. I is the inertia matrix around the center of mass and omega and I must be uh, expressed in the same reference frame. Uh, usually it's it's a reference frame that is um, attached to the rigid body. So I is the inertia matrix around the center of mass as we saw before. Ixx is uh, the integral of y square plus z square dm. Ixy is the integral of xy dm of each particle. Uh, each, not particle, each part of the uh, rigid body. And omega and I must be expressed in the same reference frame. 
So what happened if we have omega uh, not in the same reference frame of I? Then we need to transform the inertia matrix from the current, uh, from the uh, link or the rigid body reference frame into say the world reference frame. So what we do, we take I in the um, in the uh, link or the the uh, rigid body reference frame, and if omega is in the word re reference frame, as you can see here. Now what happened? Yeah, as you can see here, you see omega is in reference frame K, say link K in a robotic arm. Then I need to transform this omega into the world in order to get omega in world coordinates. So I get omega K. This is omega in ref in, in no here it's omega in in zero reference frame it's the world coordinate and I want to transform for me to the k to the link reference frame therefore I multiply it by a rotation matrix r from zero to k and I need to take also to do this also to the other side, and I need to take on the left the transpose. And therefore, when I open the parentheses here, no, no, it's not working. When I open the parentheses here, then this change the order and I get omega k in zero reference frame times r from k to zero and r from k to zero transpose here. It's from zero to k, so it's like k to zero transpose, omega k in zero reference frame. So this multiplication of r i r transpose is actually like transforming r from the uh, K reference frame into the zero reference frame, because now I multiply it by omega, which is expressed in the zero reference frame. Therefore, I can say that I in the zero reference frame, say in world reference frame, is the I the inertia matrix in the K reference frame, the link reference frame, multiplied from the left with a rotation matrix and from the right with the rotation matrix transform. And that is the transformation of the inertia matrix from, from another reference frame, say K, to the world reference frame, say zero. So this is how we change the representation of the inertia matrix from one reference frame to another. So now we can use this in order to express the energy and then uh, put everything and uh, substitute everything into the Lagrange equation of motion and then get the equation of motion. And in general, the equation of motion look like this. We can set it, although it's, it's big equations of motions and several equations, we can set them in a, a specific matrix form, which have 
the M, which is the inertia matrix of the entire of the entire robot. Then there is the Coriolis and centrifugal forces part, which is the matrix times Q dot. We have the vector G, which is the effect of gravity. And on the right hand side, we have the forces. First, we have the torque at the joints, a torque and forces at the joints. And then we have the external forces, which each of them is multiplied by the Jacobian to the uh, point where the force is applied. So this is the general structure of the uh, equations of motion. And we can take the equation of motion that we found last time and put them in this structure. Some properties of the uh, matrices. So M is symmetric and positive definite matrix. You know what is what is it? Uh, a positive definite matrix. What is it? You need help. <laughs> It's a matrix which its eigenvalues are positive, strictly positive, greater than zero. And such a matrix, when you put it in, in a quadratic form, like a V transpose M V will be always positive. They do not must be, they don't have to be unique. Uh, so they can be some multiplication, but they are real and they are positive. Uh, for, uh, for M. And the kinetic energy of the system can be expressed as Q dot, as half of Q dot transpose M Q dot. Which yes, so the kinetic energy is always positive. Um, yes, and there is another property, interesting property, which say that m dot so m is a matrix which depends on q. So M dot is taking the derivative of M with respect to the time, okay? So taking, taking the time derivative of each element of M, this is M dot. And M dot minus two C, C is the matrix of uh, centrifugal and, um, and Coriolis forces. This part, is is skew symmetric so it's q it's a for its a quadratic form is is always zero so q dot transpose times this matrix q dot is always zero this is kind of a unique property of the relation between m m dot and c and C is not unique, but we can always find the C that will uh, set the C in, in, in such a way that it will meet this property. So let's see why it's true, what I just said. You believe me, but I, I want to show you that it, it, it is true. So the kinetic energy of a rigid body is half VC transpose times VC MMI plus the kinetic energy of rotation, which is half omega transpose I omega. 
we can write VC as the linear Jac Jacobian to the center of mass of the specific link that we talk about. So it's JLI, it's the Jacobian to the center of mass of the link I, the linear part of it, times Q dot. You, we can compute this by taking the vector R from the word frame, from the origin, to the center of mass of link I, and then taking its derivative with respect to Q of this uh, vector. That, that's the meaning of JLI, which is the RCI, the vector R from this uh, origin to the center of mass of the uh, link I, uh, with derivative of this with, with respect to Q. Also, the omega is the angular Jacobian. It's the, the angular part of the Jacobian. Uh, of link i uh, times q dot. This is the angular velocity of the link i. So if I take the kinetic energy as, as written above and substitute the terms from v, for vc and for omega i, I get the term uh, on the bottom. As you can see, I substituted instead of VC, JLI Q dot, right here, and here, this is the V transpose V, and this is the omega transpose I omega, omega is JAI Q dot. And when I substitute this inside, I get half, Q dot transpose here. In the middle, I get JLI transpose JLI times MI. This is this. And I get JAI transpose here. JAI here which is the inertia matrix expressed in world frame. So I need to do the transformation that I showed you before. This is I and JAI here. And I get the matrix here, which multiplied by Q dot or half of Q dot transpose here, Q dot here. And this is actually the inertia matrix M, M of Q. This is how it looks like. And how I, how I can build it as a matrix. Okay. Let's continue. So in general, the structure of the inertia matrix is this. This, what we saw here in the parentheses in the middle, this is the inertia matrix. I just change the inertia matrix, the high inertia matrix of the link from a zero reference frame to the link reference frame by multiplying by R I R transpose. That's it in order to transform uh, the inertia matrix from the K reference frame to the Z, uh, to, from the zero reference frame to the K reference frame. Any questions on that? Okay. Can you hear me on the Zoom? Yes. Good. You're still alive. <laughs> okay. And now let's talk about the centrifugal and Coriolis matrices. 
a matrix. It's not matrices, just one matrix. As you recall, this matrix is here at the center, C times Q dot, and C is a matrix which depends on Q and Q dot on the configuration and the velocity of the configuration parameters. So let's see how we can build this matrix. Again, let's get back. So I have part of it of C comes from dt to dq dot and part from dt to dq. dv to dq goes directly to g, to the gravity effect, because this comes from n potential energy. So this goes directly, the g term here comes directly to the v. So the C is only part of dt to dq dot and dt to dq. And let's see how we build it. So we said it comes only from the kinetic energy, dt to dq dot and dt to dq. So Let's start with the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is half Q dot and Q dot. Q dot on a transpose and Q dot. We take the derivative of the kinetic energy with respect to the uh, time, to the uh, Q dot, to the uh, velocity of the uh, configuration. And we get, when we take the derivative, it's a multiplication. So we take the derivative as derivative of multiplication. So first, we take the derivative of a q dot transpose and q dot. So derivative of m q dot is m. We left with half q dot transpose m. This is the first part. And the second part is taking the derivative of this Q dot, this Q dot actually, so we left with half N Q dot. And, and since, since N is symmetric, and no, actually, we can write this as M Q dot and M Q dot, we can write this since it's symmetric as M Q dot. And the derivative of M Q dot is time derivative is M Q double dot and M dot Q dot. So now that we have the first term of the uh, Lagrange equation. The first term of the Lagrange equation is dt d to dt of dt to dq dot. And this is the term. M q double dot. We already know what it is M. And this is the first part of the equations of motion. Recall that this is the equation of motion. So M Q double dot is here. So what left for C is only the part of M dot Q dot from here. So this is already part of the equation of motion and M dot Q dot is left for the C, the C matrix.
and let's see the other part of C. So we again start with the kinetic energy, and we know that L is T minus V. So the equation of motion, as we saw here, this is the Lagrange equation on the left, d to dt of dl to dq dot minus dl dq equals the external forces qi. But now, when we substitute l equals t minus v, we get this equation, d to dt of dt to dq dot, and this, we already saw that this is mq double dot plus mq dot. dv, v is not depends on q dot, only on q. Therefore, dv to dq dot is zero. dt to dqi plus dv to dqi, which is g which is the effect of gravity. Therefore, for C, we have only this part and this part. Take the derivative of this with respect to Q. This is Q dot, it doesn't depend on Q, but N is a function of Q. And therefore we need to take the derivative of N with respect to Q. The N to the Q, N is a matrix, Q is a vector. Therefore, the N to the Q, taking derivative of a matrix with respect to a vector, it's a tensor. It's like a three-dimensional matrix. So it's, it's the first matrix is taking a, the derivative of M with respect to Q1. Then the second one behind it is with respect to Q2 and so on. But when I multiply this by Q dot, I get a matrix. When I might multiply this by this three-dimensional matrix, like three-dimensional tensor by Q dot transpose, I get a matrix. And this is the matrix times Q dot. So I have this matrix times Q dot, and I have this matrix here, Q dot transpose BMD Q, which is another matrix. And this, all of this together, is C times Q dot. I have Q dot here from the right and Q dot here. So this is actually the term for C, for the code Coriolis and centrifugal forces. Okay? You understand? So I can conclude that C of Q and Q dot is simply N dot minus half Q dot transpose the M D Q one and the end to dqn. And this I know how to do because this is a matrix with respect to a derivative matrix with respect to q1, to q2, qn. And every time this is a matrix times a, a vector, so it's a row vector. And therefore, this is a matrix, n by n matrix. Okay, this is how I can compute the Coriolis and centrifugal forces. Now let's talk about the gravity, G. We have a potential energy and we take, take its derivative in order to get the uh, 
to get the uh, the uh, the vector of uh, the gravity effect. So let's see. We have a rigid body, and I have a vector pointing from the origin of the world frame to its center of mass, R O C. And G is pointing downward. Therefore, the potential energy is M I G transpose R. G is a, is a vector downward with the acceleration of, a, of gravity. So it has a direction and a magnitude. Here it's 9.8. And the direction is downward. And zero and minus is because the it, it is this is pointing downward, but the energy is positive. As we go up, the energy is, is increased. Okay. And this is the acceleration down, gravity with direction down, vector from the world or origin to the link center of mass. So G, the vector of the effect of the gravity force on each of the uh, configuration parameters, each of the angles of the uh, joints, is simply the vectorly. So we can take dv to dq. So we have this n and g are constant. And the only thing that it, only, only thing that it depends on q on the con configuration parameters is r is r. r is here. So I need to take the derivative of r with respect. Q. But this means taking the derivative of this vector that points from the origin to the center of mass of link i with respect to all the configuration parameters. Basically, it's all the configuration parameters that before it in the robotic arm, because the, the, the parameters that after it does not affect the location of this. But still, we need to take the, the, the earth just will be zero. So the R to the Q is the definition of Jacobian. So it's the Jacobian, the linear Jacobian of the center of mass of the link I. This is J by I. It's the same Jacobian that we used here, same Jacobian that we use here for the inertia matrix. So we can compute it once and use it multiple times. And then when we substitute everything, like minus MIG times the Jacobian, we get this G dot in matrix here. So the dot between a vector and a matrix is simply like taking the, uh, the transpose and multiply the, because A dot B is like A transpose B. So A dot B is like A transpose B. And this is A transpose is G times M, M, I, J, L, I. G is constant, therefore we can take it out of the parentheses and do the sum only on the M, I, J, L. Okay? And this is how we can compute G. So, this concludes 
the part of the uh, uh, dynamics of a robotic systems system and actually each mechanical system and also an electrical system can be expressed in this matrix form. This is more for mechanical system because we said inertia matrix, centrifugal and Coriolis uh, matrix, gravity, vector, and the external forces. So every mechanical system can be written in this form. So it's a very strong and important form, matrix form of the equation of motion. It's a second order the, uh, differential equation. So it's a second order. And now we can talk about controlling this mechanical system. We have here forces at the joint or torques at the joint that I can control. If I control this, I can control the movement. Q, Q dot, Q delta. So if I want to control the movement, I need to change the torque, top. Now the question is how to do it. And that's what we'll discuss after the uh, break. Okay, we'll take 10 minutes and we'll continue after that. So now we'll talk about the control of, of a system. So say we have a dynamic, a robot dynamic. As we said before, with the uh, matrices, uh, it's recording, yes. With the matrices M, C, and G. And U, which is the torque and the motors, is something that we control. So the, this is the motor force. And we have a controller that controls the torque, which gets as an input to the dynamical system. And from the dynamical system, we get a motion of the system of Q and Q dot. This gets as a feedback to our system. We have a desired position and velocity. And therefore we have an L position and L velocity. The controller gets the L's in the position and velocity, and then generates a command to the motors uh, what, what the, the, the torque in the motors should be. Touch any. <laughs> okay. So now we will see how we can control such a system. So say we have a, a two degrees of freedom robot. First degree of freedom is the rotation uh, by theta one, and second degree of freedom is the translation D2. And we have the inertia of the first link and the mass of the first link and the inertia and the mass of the second link. We have, we have the length to the first uh, center of mass, and D2 is the length to the center, the second center of mass. So the dynamics is the M matrix is Mi J linear Jacobian to the first link 
and then to the second link, and then V, and, and we do this first for the second first link and the second link, and also the angular velocity. J V is the derivative of um, of P C the center of mass of this. Here of theta one, and then we do this also for theta two. The inertia matrix is this, and we uh, can uh, compute this. You can do this at home. Yes. Like in this case, maybe the inertial matrix can be a diagonal instead of. Um, it's much harder uh, because you need to take the effects of of the rotational the rotation of the frame. If you do this around the uh, world coordinate frame, then it's much easier. You just need to take all the velocities with respect to the world. And, and the Jacobian. So, so let's do it. it it's very easy. Uh, in frame, in the, in the original frame, uh, the center of, uh, of mass of the third plane is L1 cosinus 1 cosinus theta 1. L1 sinus sine theta, uh, theta 1 and 0, and the uh, uh, location of the second uh, center of mass is V2 cosine 1, V cosine theta 1, and V2 sine theta 1. And therefore, JV1 is simply the derivative of this with respect to theta 1 and then theta 2. With respect to theta one, L one cosine one is minus L one sine one, the derivative with respect to theta one, and the, the derivative of L one sine theta one is L one cosine theta one, and there is no derivative with respect to theta two, two d two. So this is zero. And J V two is the uh, derivative of this, of PC2, with respect to uh, theta 1 and theta 2, and D2, sorry, theta 1 and D2. So the, uh, the uh, derivative with respect to theta 1 is minus D2 sine theta 1, then D2 cosine theta 1, is this, the derivative of this and the derivative of zero is zero and the derivative of PC2 with respect to D2 is simply cosine one and sine one. Yeah. Very simple. So we have J1, J V2. Now if I multiply JV1 transpose is a, a, a two by three matrix times three by two, it's a two by two matrix. And also this. So I get this, the first term, and then and the second, the third term. Yeah. Here they are. Now I need to take to compute the angular Jacobian. Angular Jacobian is simply uh, the 
uh, rotation uh, the rotation vector which is 0, 0, 1 with respect to theta 1 and d2 is not rotating so it's the yeah. d2 with respect to d2 is 0 this is with respect to uh, uh, theta 1 it's simply the z direction is the direction of rotation and I can uh, calculate J transpose I J, which is this I Z Z one I Z Z two. And eventually I can compute um The M matrix, this is one, this comes from here, this comes from here, then I have this term, which is the IZZ1, and then I have this term, which is IZZ2, and I can collect everything and do the sum and get the inertia matrix. So, now we got the n and q double dot. Then we need to find n dot q dot, this term, and also a g. As we discussed. Yes. So this we already discussed. Here. Here they said instead of C, they call this V. The same thing. Instead of C that we talked about before, now it's, it's, it is called V. And V is the M dot Q dot minus half. And, and this complicated term. So let's discuss this. V, or what we called before C. It's first taking the derivative of M with respect to the time. So we got, okay, we got this. Let's, so taking the derivative of M with respect to time, this is m dot one one, m dot one two, and so on. And then taking the minus half q dot transpose dm to the q one. So this is dm one one to the q one, dm one two to the q one, and so on. And Mijk is dMIJ to dQk. So in general, it looks like this for two, dim two dimensional system. And We can separate this to centrifugal forces and Coriolis and the Coriolis forces, the C and B. B is also called Christopher symbol. It's the same thing, just going over the same operation. And you can look at it, it's it's exactly the same as we did before. So let's go back and work on our example. So Bijk is this. This is the part that comes from M. 
mijk is dmij to dqk and m we already computed it's here this is m you see it depends only on d2 so dm and c dmij to dqk so dm writes like this because we have no so I don't know how they got this Let's see would be one two b two one and and they computed this uh, you can follow and and see how how you can do this and then you get the uh, centrifugal and Coyolis uh, vector and gravity, you simply take the, uh, the vector to the lead, to the center of mass of the lead, and this is how you compute this J transpose times mg as we discussed. So we have M1G, M2G, and so on for each link. And we have the Jacobian transpose to the center of mass of each link. So here, if we take the Jacobian transpose times Mg, so we get G is minus J transpose M1 G J minus J two transpose M2 G and the, the Jacobian we already computed. This is J1, this is J2, and G constant in the y minus y direction. So minus M1 G minus M2 G, and we can multiply this and get the result. And we can substitute everything in and we get finally these equations of motions from M, C and B and G and all the other equations of motion uh, where tau one is the torque on theta one and S two is the force along D two of the second uh, of the second degree of freedom. Okay. Okay. Now that we have the equation of motion. Oh, we did this, we can do it also for a, another a, a robot with two links. As you can see here, with two degrees of freedom, Q1 and Q2, and the le a length to the center of mass of the one, and the length to the center of mass of the two of the second is, is this. And we want to find the M, V, and G matrices here. So again, M, we have the general formula for M. We have two links the location of the center of mass of the first link is L, LC1 cosine one, LC1 sine one, 
and the location of the center of mass of the second link is L, uh, LC2 cosine theta one plus theta two plus L one times cosine one. So this is the projection, projection of L1 plus L, the projection of LC2 on the x-axis. Yes. And then L1 sine 1 plus LC2 sine 1 sine cosine 1 plus L sine theta 1 plus theta 2. We take the derivative of PC1 with respect to theta one, and then with respect to theta two, we get the Jacobian of the linear Jacobian of this first link. Then we take the derivative of PC two with respect to theta one, and then with respect to theta two, and we get uh, the same. Uh, we get this term of JV2. We can do uh, the same uh, for the uh, rotation. So we have rotation, a uh, vector of rotation around the Z axis, so this is zero, zero, 001, and the zero, zero, 001. And also for the second link, there's another rotation. Uh, around theta two, uh, around Q two, um, again around the uh, Z. So we can compute all this multiplication and get this result for the inertia matrix. Then um, we want to find the gravity effect. Was the V was here? M and then V and then G and then V. So G is J V one cross cos M one G minus J V two M two G G is simply downward in the minus y direction. And JV1 transpose is this, times M1G is this, and so on. You can do the multiplication after substituting everything and get the, the result of the effect of gravity on each of the leaves. So this is actually the fork that the gravity force applies first on the, the first link and then on the second link. So this part is the amount of force that both the center of mass of the second link and the center of mass of the first link applies on the first joint. You see here, M2G times this length, this length actually, plus this length, L1 cosine one, L, uh, and L, there should be GM here, not L1 cosine one, something is wrong. So the, the parenthesis should be itself here, would be here, and then we have GM2 times L1 cosine 1 plus L2 times cosine 1 plus 2. And this is the effect of the gravity. This is the torque that the center of mass of the first link applies on the, uh, on the joint. And also for the second link, there's the effect only of the center of mass of the second one.
Okay. Now the V matrix. Starts from B and M, and we substitute them and calculate the Z as before. As you can see, and this is the entire equation of motion of the of this um, of this part. So here we calculated the equations of motions and the matrix M, C, and G, or M, V, and G, of two examples. And I showed you how you can ca calculate this using uh, the uh, kinetic and potential energy or using the linear and angular Jacobian. Any questions on that? If not, uh, I'll move. We finished this part. I'll move to the next presentation. That was class nine, I think. Yes, lecture nine. I need lecture 10. Just a second. So we so we, we go to uh, ne the next part, which is the control. Uh, yes, those are the Lagrange equations of motions and the dynamics, and we got a, a, here a, the external forces. And before we get to the control, we will talk about systems with constraint. System with constraints. So say we have a dynamical system, but we have a constraint, constraint equation on the uh, 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 configuration parameters. So say we have a function g of q, which is zero. This is type of constraint. Um, so if we have such a constraint, here we have a system without constraints. So we have, if I have q, K or n degrees of freedom, I have n parameters, n configuration parameters. But if I have a constraint, I have less actually configura configuration parameters. But sometimes it's not easy to solve this equation of the constraint and reduce the number of parameters. And therefore we want to solve a um, the uh, the system with an additional uh, parameters, but have a, a constraint equation. And sometimes the constraint is not only on the Q. Sometimes the constraint is on Q dot. Something like a, a Fabian constraint that we talked about. So let's take, for instance, this kind of constraint. It's a, G is a function of Q1 to Qn and is equals to zero. 
this is type of general constraint. We define the derivative of the constraint function AIK is DG to DGI to QK. So we have many equations of constraints. You can have not only one constraint, but any constraints. And AIK is the derivative of GI with respect to QK. So, when we talked about Lagrange equation, we, we talked about variation. If you recall, the uh, principle of least, least actions was about variations from the uh, from the actual trajectory to uh, a, pro a trajectory in that meets the constraints. So the variation of these constraints, if I take delta Q here, so it's it's actually AIK delta QK, it's actually the derivative of the constraint, and it, uh, it's zero, the derivative of the constraint is zero, therefore the variation is zero. And we recall that we have a force that had actually worked in order to, uh, to allow the constraint. To, uh, to maintain the constraint. And lambda i is the magnitude of this force that works on the system in order for the system to, uh, to meet the constraint. So the work of the constraint forces is the force times the displacement. Displacement is A delta Q. Okay, does it like... Uh... Virtual form. yeah exactly it's it's like the the principle the virtual form in, in the virtual world principle yeah so this is the work of the constraint when I'm doing a variation of the movement ai delta q which ai is dq dg to dq times delta q this is the variation, and this must be also a zero in, a, in equilibrium, but not here. So, lambda is the magnitude of the constraint force. The work of the constraint force is like this. And if we recall how we develop the Lagrange equation, we got this times delta Q and the integral of this, this is the action. And the, the derivative of the action must be zero because we have the principle of least action. And the action actually is the integral of the work. Uh, and therefore this must be met uh, for every delta Q, and therefore everything here must be zero. And we get the Lagrange equations. Yes, this is the principle of least action. This must be zero uh, and must be met for every delta Q. And therefore we get the Lagrange equation for systems with a constraint. So we have here, you see here with the minus, so when I take it to the right hand side, is plus lambda i a i k. So we have here where g, so now I have this n parameters, n equations of a Lagrange equation. But I have here another n parameters, lambda r, which are the magnitude of the force. Therefore, I have to solve this with the constraints equation. 
which are n ad additional n equations. So in total, I have n plus n equations, and I have q, which are n parameters, plus lambda, which are n parameters. So I have lambda and q parameters, and I have the Lagrange equation plus the constraints equation. And I here I have to solve everything simultaneously. And this is quite difficult. And I'll show you how we do that. So in total, we have the Lagrange equation with the uh, uh, with the external force of not the external, the internal force of the constraint and the constraints equation, and we need to solve them simultaneously. So how do we solve this? So say I have a party and constraints of the form aq dot equals zero. This is exactly what we had before. We had here g, and we took the derivative of this, which is a q dot a d, g to d q times q dot, and that must be zero. So this, when I have, we have the constraint g of q equals zero, zero, we can write it as a Papian constraint as a, which is dg to dq times q dot equals zero. But this is much general, a q dot equals zero. And therefore, in the general form, the Lagrange equation becomes here that we have lambda transpose lambda times a, so it's a transpose lambda. This is the those lambda which are the magnitude of the uh, constraint force that are called also Lagrange multiples. If you remember this from other classes. So the lambda is once the magnitude <clears throat> of the constraint force and is also called Lagrange multiplier. So now when we have a mechanical system such that L is half Q dot transpose and Q Q dot, which is the kinetic energy, and V is the potential energy. So this is our mechanical system. We have the uh, Lagrange equations. M is the inertia matrix. C is the Coriolis and centrifugal uh, forces, as we saw. And N is what we called G before. It's the force of the potential energy, like gravity, and non-conservative forces. We can also add the other forces. And we have the constraint forces, which are A transpose lambda, and A is the derivative of G. OK? G are the constraints. Those are Q, are external forces. So we get another equations of motion, but here we have lambda. So we have the dynamic of the system. This is the form, but we have to solve for lambda that we don't have. You're with me? It's, uh, it's uh, to understand. Okay. So 
recall that the constraint is a two dot equals zero. This is our constraint. So we need to solve this with our constraint equation. So how we do this? We take the time derivative of the constraint, which is a q double dot plus a dot q dot equals zero. Now, now I can take this is the constraint. This is the time derivative of the constraint. We can take the dynamics. Recall the dynamics equation here. This is the dynamics equation. And I can take only Q double dot and put everything, all this to the right hand side and multiply by the uh, inverse of n, n to the minus one. Uh, because n is a positive definite, therefore it always has uh, the inverse matrix. So this is what we did here from the dynamic equation. We took all the parts of the dynamic equation, put them on the right hand side, hand side and multiplied by the inverse of it. Okay, but now we have Q double dot. This is, we can, we also have Q double dot from the uh, time derivative of the constraint equation. So we can substitute Q double dot that into the constraint equation, and we have this equation. So now we want to find what is lambda. So we take only a a n the inverse of n times a transpose lambda here, and this and take all the rest to the right hand side. So we have a m minus one q minus n minus c q dot plus a dot q dot. Everything left on the right on the, on the left and on the right hand side. And therefore now I can multiply by a m inverse of m a transpose and take the inverse of all of this and multiply it on both sides. So this is here, and this goes here, and this actually what lambda is. This is the magnitude of the uh, constraint forces. And therefore we got the lambda, we can substitute it back to the dynamical system and uh, back to the dynamical system and then integrate this and find how this moves. Okay, we'll take a break now and then we'll discuss, we'll do an example. Okay? Now it's seven already. Okay, so now let's have a, an example of the dynamics of system with constraints. Say we have a pendulum. So we have a particle which is connected to a road and can rotate around a, a pivot here, about the region a, at an angle theta. So our constraint, the system can be parameterized uh, in uh, 
actually it's, it's a system with a single degree of degree of freedom theta but we can say it's that it is a system with two degrees of freedom x and y and with a constraint that x squared plus y squared is equal to l squared which is the length of the row of the pendulum so we can either write it as a single degree of freedom system or a two degrees of freedom system with a constraint. So let's do this with a two degrees of freedom system with one constraint for the sake of the example. So this is kind of a holonomic constraint because we can integrate this constraint and actually parameterize this with theta and that's it. But we can also use this constraint and we can take its time derivative and then it becomes a plotting constraint. So the time derivative of the constraint, x squared plus y squared equal x squared, is x x dot plus y y dot, this is here, equals zero. There's the two, but the two with the, and the zero kind of vanish, okay? Because it's two x x dot, but we can divide everything by two. So we can rewrite this as x y times x dot y dot. This x, y is the A matrix, and x dot, y dot is the Q dot vector. And this is the time derivative of the constraint. The Lagrangian is simply the kinetic energy here. Kinetic energy is half m v square, v square of a system, a particle that has two uh, parameters, x and y, is x squared plus y squared. This is its velocity. x dot squared plus y dot squared. And the potential energy is simply mgy. y is how much its height. Yes. So this mgy minus mgy is the uh, potential energy. We can rewrite the Lagrange equation. So dl to dq dot, take the derivative of this with respect to x and y is mx dot square, mx double dot, and, and my double dot. DL to DQ is only this mg minus mg. And we can write the entire dynamics. Now, this m x and y double dot, which is q double dot. This is this part. And DL to DQ is here, zero. M minus mg, but we have minus dl dq, so two minus is plus, m plus a transpose lambda. A transpose, this is a, so a transpose is a column vector xy times lambda, which lambda is, we have only one lambda because we have one constraint. And lambda is actually the force that is acting in the road in order to maintain this constraint. This is lambda. And now we want to solve for lambda. So, Lambda is the force acting inside the rod. Yes. So it's uh, 
if, if it was like a, a, a string, so this is the tension of yeah. the string. So, from our previous solution for lambda, that this was the general form for the solution for lambda. So, now we can take the A, M, inverse of M, A transpose. So, A is X, Y. Inverse of M is simply one over M. And A transpose is X, Y. So this entire term is this multiplication, and it's X, X squared over N plus Y squared over N, which is this term. And, and so we have this here. One, this is to the minus one, so it's the inverse of this. It's m over x square y square. Now we have a m minus one. A is x y. Oh, a m minus one is x y times this matrix. Only this. So it's x over m y over m. And then we have q. We do not have external forces. C q dot. Uh, we didn't have, I think we didn't have CQ dot, we have only zero mg. So it's only n, zero mg, so it's zero mg. And because the minus, minus here, here is the minus, this minus, and we have a dot Q dot, a dot is x, y, dot, which is x dot y dot, and q dot is x dot y dot. So in general, lambda, we can solve, lambda is this, we solve this, this is y m over n is going, it's y g, okay, y g, minus, minus x dot square, minus y dot square. So this is the general solution. Um, what x squared plus y squared is simply L squared for the constraint. And we're left with this. GY was the minus, oh, the minus is outside. And everything here is plus. So this is lambda. This is actually the tension of the of the rope. So we solved for, for lambda, and then we can substitute it. Yeah. We can substitute it back into the equation of motion. We have the lambda here. We solve for lambda, so we can substitute it back, and now we have a, a, the equation of motion only with x and y and x dot and y dot. And yeah, x y, x dot y dot, and x double dot y double dot. And we can integrate this and find how the particle is moving in X and Y. Um, the solution for lambda, the equation of motion we found, the string tension is the magnitude of A transpose lambda. A transpose is X1 times lambda. So it's the length, the magnitude of x, y times lambda, because lambda is scalar here. It's not a vector. It's lambda times square root of x squared plus y squared, which is lambda a. 
the tension. And lambda, we found it's this one. So this is the tension of this string. And yeah, and if we substitute back here, we have mgy over L, mgy over L, L squared, but we have the L here, so it's only one L, y, and this is from gravity, mgl y, the, the height, and this is m x dot plus y dot square, this is the velocity, uh, l square times l, so we have only l, so it's like m omega square l. This is on omega square L. And this is omega, omega square L square divided by L is omega square L, which is the uh, centrifugal force, force. So it makes sense. Um, I don't have time for another. <laughs> okay, I'll do the, the next example. Bye. And then we'll finish this. So the next example is, is just a wheel that is rotating on the, on the floor, turning on the floor, and we have two degrees of freedom, and actually four degrees of freedom, x, y is the contact force, the contact point, and theta is the uh, steering direction, and phi is the rotation angle. So steering angle and rotation angle. X, Y, the location of the contact. Yes. We had theta, P, rho is the radius of the wheel. And we have steering input, which is uh, tau theta. This is the steering. And, uh, and phi. Is not steering, phi is actually driving. And the roll speed is rho p dot, how much it rolls forward. But we have two strengths x dot, the location of the contact force, the contact point, is rho p dot, how much it moved forward. This is the velocity, the x velocity. So it's it's uh, rho phi dot. It's direction on the x direction. So it's cosine phi dot. And y dot is rho phi dot sine phi dot. And so I can write two a uh, uh, constraints equation. So in general, this is a two-dimensional problem, but we took a four-dimension vector. But since the constraints are constraints on the velocity, those constraints are not holonomic. Therefore, we cannot write this, even if we want to. In the previous example, if we wanted, we, can, we could write it with only one direction and do a not two. But here, if, even if we want, we cannot write this problem with only two degrees of freedom because the constraints are constraints on, on the velocities and not constraints on the uh, parameters themselves. So, we have a 
the, the wheel, we have the four parameters, and we have the two equations of the constraints. And we can rearrange the constraints equation into a matrix form. And look, this is x dot is one times q dot, which is x dot y dot theta dot p dot. Then I have nothing for y here, nothing for theta here, theta dot, sorry, here. And we have here p dot times rho cosine theta, rho cosine theta, mm -hmm. with minus. And again, for this, we also have only y dot, we don't have the x dot, and we don't have theta dot, so there is zero here. And we have, for p dot, we have rho sine theta, which is here. So we wrote this in a form of a q dot equals zero. So a is this map. A q dot equals zero. So this is our constraint, and this is a Pfaffian constraint. So M is the mass of the wheel, L2 is the moment of inertia, L1, I2, sorry, is the moment of inertia, I1 is the moment of inertia around, around the vertical axis, uh, about rotation with theta. The Lagrangian is the center of mass velocity is x dot square plus y dot square. So it's kinetic energy is half and x dot square y dot square. And the rotational uh, uh, energy, kinetic energy, is i1 theta dot square and i2 p dot square. So I can write the dynamics uh, from the Lagrangian equation. This is the dynamics, this. And I1, I2, that's it. Then there is no Coriolis, there are no centrifugal forces, and there is no graph, because everything is in the But there is constraint A here. So I need to take A transpose times lambda. And I have two constraints, therefore I have lambda one, lambda two. So I have A transpose times lambda. And I have also the torques from the steering and the driving torque. These are the inputs. Also, they are acting on theta and t, to, on the two last degrees of it. So this is the equation of motion, and now we need to solve for lambda one and lambda two. Lambda one and lambda two, one is a force that acts that the, uh, in, Lambda one is on X, lambda Y is on Y. So it's like the slip, slippage force. So it won't slide. It's like the friction force. Lambda one, lambda two. So we take the time derivative of the constraints. So recall, the constraints were these. And if I take the, the time derivative, I have x double dot, and I can move this to the other side equal rho p 
T double dot cosine theta, and then minus rho, then the derivative of the T, T dot of theta, yes, T dot theta dot sine theta because of the cosine, yes, and Y double dot also taking its derivative of the constraint is Y dot rho. So I take first the derivative with respect to T dot, it becomes T double dot, and then the derivative with respect to theta, which becomes cosine theta times theta dot. So this is the derivative of the uh, of the constraint. And from the equations of motion, this is the equation of motion. I can take the two first one. So we have mx double dot here equals lambda one zero. That's it. so equals lambda one. So lambda one equals minus n x double dot from here to the first equation here. And minus n x double dot. So x double dot from here is minus n times this the constraint the derivative of the constraint. Okay? And under two, this is all y dot w. So, and from the equation of motion, I have I1 theta w dot equals tau theta. This is the second equation, the third equation. And the last equation is I two T double dot minus rho lambda one cosine theta minus rho lambda two sine theta equals theta and equals tau T. So this is the second equation. So this multiplies lambda one, this multiplies, multiplies lambda two. So I can put lambda one and lambda two here and get right I one theta two equals tau two and then I have here we have nothing theta double dot, but I do have I square T double dot plus here white's M all square. When I put this here, we have cosine and cosine here. So it's cosine square. And I have cosine sine. This is with minus. And here I have sine square plus cosine, sine cosine, which is the sine cosine part here and here. Kind of cancel each other, and we left with only a rho square. And this becomes the equation of motion only in theta and t. So this is kind of nice that from the four degrees of freedom, we got to equation of motion of only theta double dot and phi double. And if we want to find what is 
x double dot and y double dot, we can simply calculate from here and get all the dynamics. So, from these two equations of motion, we can integrate them and solve for theta and phi of t of the time. And then substitute theta and phi into the constraint equation and solve for x and y. And then get x, y, theta, and phi. So how do we solve this? How we integrate this? We have here a system, a second order dynamical system. System second order differential equation. So the first th thing that we do is we're doing a order reduction. We reduce the order from second order to first order dynamical equation. So, if our general form of the dynamical system is n q double dot c q dot plus g equals f, some external force, then we can define state variables x, which are x1 and x2, x1 is q x2 is q dot. <clears throat> and then we can write the equation of motion in state space representation. So x we have here. So we can write x dot, it's x dot one, x dot two. So it's double the size. If q was n by one uh, parameters, so x is 2n parameters. So x dot 1, x dot 2. x dot 1 is simply q dot. q dot is x2. So x dot 1 is x2. And x dot 2 is q double dot. q double dot is here in the dynamical system. So we can move everything to the right hand side. So it's f minus c q dot minus g. Everything multiplied by inverse n. So inverse n times f minus c p dot minus p. For the whole system here, this is a function f of x. We can, we can say that this is the function of x where x is x dot 1, x dot 2. Actually, I had to write here instead of q dot, and actually x2. Because we move to the representation of x instead of q, q dot. So we have a general system, which is x dot equals f of x. f of q and q dot. OK? This is f of x. It's a it's a it's a, a vector function. So now we have a first order dynamical system x dot equals f of x. We have an initial condition. So in zero time, we had we the system was in x. Not x zero position, position and velocity. We want to integrate this to find x of t, how this evolves over time. So the first and simple method is to discretize the system, the time. So pk is t zero plus k delta t, such that x at the k step is x of tk, where k is 
New Year one and so on. And everything is in steps, in discrete steps. And numerical integration is simply xk plus one equals xk plus f of x, which is x dot times delta t. You can see that from the definition of, uh, of derivative, the definition is xk plus one minus xk divided by delta t is x dot. And x dot is f of fk. So this is kind of the, from the def comes from the definition of derivative. This is a very simple way of integrating a, a, a dynamical system. It is called newton raphson method. And it's a first order a approximation of the integral. Uh, it's not very accurate, but it works. It works better if the delta t is, is uh, small, very small. Um, and if we want to take a better approximation, this is the fourth order Runge-Kutta method. So say we have a dynamical system y dot equals f of t and y. And y at t zero is y zero. Here it's the y instead of x, but it's the same. We want to integrate to find y. We pick a step side h. And we define that yn plus one is yn plus one over six h times k1 plus 2k2 plus 2k3 plus k4. And the t is also advancing the time tn plus one is tn plus h. h is the delta t. And k1 is the uh, is f at t n y n this is k1 the, the actually the, the tangent to the uh, 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 to the curve to f actually k1 is f at at the beginning k2 is f at another step and K3 is F at another step of Y, just Y. And K4 is F at T1, Y1, and another step. And this takes the approximation of all of this. This is in numerical analysis we learn how to how they derive, derive this and reach this formula, but it's very easy to use this formula and simply calculate k1, k2, k3, k4, and as described here. And that's it. And we can integrate this, and this is much more accurate. In MATLAB, it's the ODE 45 uh, um, command. That's it. Question? No? Okay. So that's it for today. We'll meet again next week. Okay. So goodbye. Goodbye.